in Luke chapter number 18, verse number 1. Luke 18, verse number 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Men ought to pray. Men, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. This is week two on this uh, uh, on a uh, new teaching I started last week I'm called Discipline in Our Prayer Life. We understand that discipline is forced obedience until a habit is formed. We should be disciplined in our prayer life. That's why he said that men ought to always pray and not lose heart. The Amplified Version give it another uh, uh, twist to it. He, and Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they always ought to pray and not turn cow, not to faint, not to lose heart and not give up. See, when I see people, a lot of people in the body of Christ today, they're giving up. They're fainting. They're losing heart. Why? Because they're not praying. The scripture told us in the book of, of Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 16, he said we ought to come boldly to the throne of grace to receive what, family? Mercy and grace for every need. So when I come, when I come to prayer, it's a one-on-one -on -one between God and I. So we said our definition of prayer is, watch this here, prayer is the channel of communication between the believer and God, whereby God's power is released into the earth realm through the combination of the believer's faith in the word of God. Prayer is the channel of communication between the believer and God, whereby God's power is released into the earth realm through the combination of the believer's faith in the word of God. Prayer is when I spend, when I, God and I will communicate with each other one-on-one. -on -one. There's no way you're going to faint, you're going to lose heart, you're going to give up, you're going to turn coward if you spend time with him. Amen. Amen. He knows something don't nobody else know. He knows something that Harvard don't know, Yale don't know, Columbia don't know, uh, uh, Georgia don't know. He knows, he knows stuff man don't know. And when you spend time with him, watch this here, you're going to change. You're going to see things different. See, and all of us ought to have a disciplined prayer life. Amen. All of us ought to have a disciplined prayer life. Go to, uh, let's turn our Bibles to uh, Mark, Luke chapter number 6. So we said that Jesus is our example. We should take the attitude of Jesus about prayer, his attitude and position on prayer. Luke chapter number what? Luke chapter number 6. The Bible says Jesus is our example. The Bible told us to copy him. We are to copy Jesus. So I look unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. Prayer is where I get my strength from, family. Prayer is where you get your strength from. In Luke chapter 6, verse number 12, if you're there, say amen. The word of God said, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to do what? Pray. And he continued what? All night and what? prayer to God, and when it was day, he called his disciple to himself, and from them he chose twelve, from whom he also named apostle. So he had a big decision to make. What big decision he had to make? He was getting ready to call twelve apostles who were going to turn the world upside down. If you got a big decision to make, you might need to spend all night in prayer. Amen. You might need to spend, one of the things the Spirit of God, when I was studying this week, something that he he, he, he brought to my attention. He wanted to bring correction. And I want for you guys to hear past Tara Hart. The Spirit of God said, uh, uh, Tara, there's nothing wrong with churches getting together and having all-night prayer. He said, here's the whole key. You got to have the right motive. Because a lot of people are doing stuff for the flesh. If you see Jesus in all-night prayer, some people just have an all-night prayer just to have all-night prayer. It looks good. See, it's just like uh, one of the things they said, uh, a lot of people, you, how many of y'all know some people, they just look busy, but they ain't doing nothing? <laughs> no, they look busy. They got a Martha spirit. That's why he said, Martha, Martha. You worried about the wrong thing. One of the things that I, one of the, I'm a reader. Your pastor's a reader. See, just like he said, it's just like being in a rocking chair. You see people rocking all day, but they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> see, when prayer ought to be, you ought to have a reason you're going to pray. Why are we praying? We're praying for this nation. Why are we praying? We're praying for the, for the, uh, 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 for the missionary. 
What are we praying? We're praying for our, our, uh, our babies, our, our teens, our youth. A lot of times people say, what are we praying for? Are we just getting together and praying? No. Anytime you see Jesus pray, when, you come out of, when he came out of prayer, there was a reason. See, there was a reason. See, you don't want to just be doing something just to be doing it. Like growing up, I told you, I, we grew up having an automobile in the house. So every time somebody came over our house and they, they had a car and they said, y'all want to go with us? Everybody jumped in the car. Because we ain't had no car. We had to catch the bus. If you ask me then as a pastor, you want to ride with me? What's my first question? Where are we going? Because I'm, I'm vision-minded now. Where there's no vision, the people parent. A lot of people are praying, but they don't have no vision. See, let me, let me tell you something, family. Let me tell you something. This is good. This is good. A lot of people in the church are called to be intercessors. One that, some, that's some of you guys calling to intercede for the church, for the body of Christ, for the pastor, his marriage, his family. Amen. Watch this here. Some of you guys are called to be intercessors. Some intercessors, how would you like to intercede for somebody else? God will tell you how to intercede for them, but you never get no answer. See, something wrong with that. You know how to pray for everybody else but yourself. Amen. That's why I said, the first thing I ought to be able to do, I ought to be able to hear God about myself, about my situation. Hey, let, me tell you, let me tell you something, family. That's why he said, we read a scripture last week, 15, John 15, 4. We're not going to, uh, John 15, 4 through 7, we're not going to read today. He said, you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. The first thing God want to fix is me. I can't help you until I fix myself. Because I need to have some evidence. I need to have some proof. That's why Nicodemus went to Jesus. Can't no man do this except the Lord be with him. See, Nicodemus wanted that power. Somebody say power. Prayer is where we get that power at. And when Jesus spent all night in prayer, he called 12 people that's going to turn the world upside down. See, and one thing, I want to go to it again. Go to Matthew chapter 10. We're going to go right quick because i got a lot of stuff I want to cover. I want to finish this so we can move on. Matthew chapter number 10, verse 27. Matthew 10, 20, just like prophecy. You always see people prophesy. Say, you great in prophecy. Then what God prophesied over your life? Don't you hate to be prophesying to somebody all over the world, but you don't have a prophecy of yourself? Your life is raggedly messed up? Amen. In Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 27, watch this, family. This is one of the main reasons why I pray. He said, whatever I tell you in, I'm in Matthew 10, 27. Whatever I tell you in the what? Whatever I tell you in the dog, speak in the, and whatever you hear in the ear, preach on the housetop. That's what I'm doing today. Whatever I heard in the ear, I'm, I'm telling you right now. See, go to Mark chapter number, where are we going? Mark chapter number 4. Mark, you have to have a disciplined prayer life. See, the church, we have an advantage. But the advantage is not going to do us any good if we don't spend no time with him. The word of God says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, we've been bought with a price. You don't belong to you. So when I go to prayer, I'm spending time with him so he can tell me what to say, what to do, where to go, what not to say, how to act. See, I'm coming boldly. I'm coming boldly to the throne of grace. Let me tell you what I'm doing. Everybody look at me. Are you in uh, uh, Mark chapter number 4? Watch this. Let's read this. I'm going to show you an example. In Mark chapter number 4, look at verse number mm -hmm, 34. Mark uh, 4, 34. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. Watch this, family. Just a nugget right here. And when they were what? Come on. Everybody need to look at that. And when they were what? He explained how many things to them. Now look at me. That's why when I get along, he explained all. I said, God, why this happened? What's going on? He explained to me. But when I am alone, when I am what? Say by myself. Now look at me. See, the Bible says for us to come boldly to the throne of grace. So when I get up in the morning, every day, somebody say every day. See, discipline, uh, 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 the word discipline means it's forced obedience to a habit for him. Every day I pray. In fact, the word of God said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, I pray without ceasing. I pray all day. I'm in a mold of praying. See, most people, he said, those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Most people, 
Most people are uh, as much a spirit today in church as they ever going to be. So if God don't speak to you in church, you ain't going to speak to you in the parking lot or while you're going home or while you're eating or while you're watching the ball game or while you're sleeping. No, you should be spiritual all day. God might choose to speak to you while you're using the bathroom, while you're cutting the lawn, while you're washing your car. We are spirit beings. We live inside of a physical body. We are spirit beings that possess a soul and live inside of spiritual body. So when, when I get up in the morning, all throughout the day, especially in the morning, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that I may see receive mercy and grace for my every need. So when I get up in the morning, I picture myself going into the throne room. See, you see how, you see this chair right here. They get, you already know the people who sit in this chair is for the leaders of this church. It's for the, they're going to put everybody else on this side, but the pastor, his system, they're going to sit in this chair. We're going to say, this is God's chair. So when I get up in the morning, I'm coming boldly, not sheepish, to the throne of God. Why? Because I want to get in his face. And when I get in his face, he's going to tell me things. And then when he tells me things, I'm going to get up, and then I'm going to start my day. Now, when I started my day, I didn't heard from God. And that's why my life, your life should be different because I didn't spend time with him. If you don't spend time with him, that's why the, the unbelievers, the world, is not bombarding the church because they don't see no change in our life. Amen. See, because we ain't in his faith. See, we in, we in the Kardashian's face. Amen. We, we, amen. We in all the television, we in all sports faith. We in them people faith, and that's what they see. See? And that's what they see. But the Bible said, look at this family, but, when, but without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were what? Alone, he explained how many things to them. If you need something explained, get in his face. Get in God's face an hour. He going to tell you. He going to tell you the truth. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now watch this here. Watch this here, family. Let's keep going. Go to Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark 135. Come on, Mark 135. Amen. We're talking about discipline in your prayer life. Now in the morning, now in the, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he did what? And there he did what? Luke 5, 16. Luke 5, number 16. Luke 5, 16. Amen. Luke 5, 16. Luke chapter number 5, verse 16, if you're there, say amen. Now watch this here. And those, I mean, I'm, in, I'm sorry, I'm in Mark. Let me get to Luke 5, 16. Amen. Luke 5, 16. Look what the word of God said. So he himself, somebody say Jesus. He often withdrew himself into the what? Wilderness and did what, family? Prayed. Go to Luke chapter number 9, verse 28. Luke 9, 28. Family, if you have a strong prayer life, you're not going to turn coward. You're not going to faint. You're not going to give up. You're not going to lose heart. You're going to be strong. You didn't spend time with the man. You didn't spend time with the man. Some of us spending time with the wrong man. Amen. We need to spend time with God. Uh, Luke chapter number what? Look at verse 28. I'm in Luke number 9, 28. If you're there, say amen. Watch this, family. Now it came to pass. Now it came to pass about eight days, first start, new beginning, after these saying that he took who? Peter, John, and James, and went up to the mountain to do what? Pray. And as he prayed, the appearance of his face was what, family? Now watch this, family. Look at me. The Bible says he went up to the mountain to pray. But as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered. Another translation said, 
the appearance of his face change. See, watch this here. Let me read it out of these different translations. Watch this, one of these translations. The NASB says, some eight days after these sins, he took along Peter, John, and James, and went up to the mount to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face became different. The NIV said, as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. Now look at me, family. I would say as he prayed. As he what? Prayed. Just like the, uh, the lep- men with the lepers. The Bible said as they went, they were healed. As you pray, your face going to change. You ain't going to respond to things like everybody else. That's why they want to know what's wrong with you. And they, say, they ask you, say, what's wrong with you? Well, how come you ain't reacting like, no, I've been in his face. Then the Bible said as they, as they prayed, as he prayed, his appearance, his face changed. His, see, that's why the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 3, if you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Why? Because you trust in him. See, I've been in his face. See, I've been, watch this here, I've been in this Facebook. I ain't been on Facebook. And so as I'm in this Facebook, this face going to change. I'm not going to respond like you respond. Why? Because I hear different. I have revelation. I know if one door closed, what's going to happen? Another door going to open. Amen. And then I know if the door that he opened, can't no man close. See, that's why you see people, you know what I'm saying, they, they face give them away. You can tell people when they're going through something. See, because the Bible said as he prayed, his face changed. His appearance changed. See, you see people come in, and you can tell that they're going through something. And some of them are going to tell you they're going through. <laughs> Amen. They're going, I'm going through. Help me out. And, baby, you need your prayer life. You need to get in prayer. Because, watch this here, you believe more what the devil is saying than God. How are you going to say, I can do all things through Christ who great is he that's in, that he is in all the world. See, see, if you are world overcome, the Bible said, we are world overcomers. How? By our faith. See, why? Because I've been listening to him. As you in his face, your face going to change. See, where you used to be intimidated, you used to be intimidated, you ain't going to be intimidated anymore. See, watch this here, family. Go to Exodus chapter 33. Let's have some fun with this. Come on, go to Exodus chapter 33. Watch this here. That's what the Bible says. Come boldly to the throne of grace, that you may receive mercy and grace for your every need. See, when you in his face, your appearance going to change. Amen. Everything going to be altered. Your conversation, the way you walk, your eyes, they going to know something that's different about you. Amen. Watch this here. In Exodus chapter 33, look at verse number 11. Exodus 33, verse number 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses. How family? How did he speak to Moses? Now, a lot of people read this here, watch this, and they say, oh, God spoke to Moses face to face. He speaks to you and I face to face too. Amen. I got a face to face relationship with God. When you come to church, your pastor ought to be confirming what you God already told you. See, so he said the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speak to his what? We understand that word friend is a covenant term. So we're in covenant with God by the blood of Jesus. So God speaks to us face to face. If God tells you something about me, he's going he gonna to tell me first or he's going to confirm it. If he don't confirm it, we, we're not, we, I'm not going to do it. Now go to Exodus 34. Watch this here, family, by Moses being in his face. Exodus chapter number 34. Watch this here. Exodus chapter 34. That's why I said when you in his face, your face going to change. Your demeanor going to change. You're going to have some boldness. You're going to have some confidence. See, your face going to change. You see, because you got a lot of the devil try to intimidate you. See, the devil's a bully. See, but when people know you ain't afraid of, afraid of, they don't mess with you. I'm talking about the devil because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Now watch this here, family. I'm in Exodus 34. Let's start at verse 27. Exodus 34, 27. If you're there, say amen. Then the Lord said to Moses, write these words, for according to the tender of these words, 
I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord how many days? Forty days and forty nights he neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablet the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face, what? Shone a glow while he talked with them. Look, look at me, family. When you talk to people and you've been spending time with God, your face going to glow. Your conversation, the tender of your words are different. The Bible said because Moses had spent time with God, he didn't even know that his face was glowing. You see people who got bubbling personality. See, the church ought to have a real bubbling personality because we got the Christ, the Holy One of God living inside of us. The Bible said when he spoke to them, he didn't even know his face glowed. And when you talk to them, your conversation is different. To where they got doom and gloom, you got victory. Amen. You speak in victory. They speak in doom and gloom. You speak in victory and increase and prosperity and peace and joy. And let me tell you something. When you have this, when you spend time with him, it'll bother people. Y'all know what I mean when I say bother. See, sometimes I want to watch the game. My son TJ bothered me. <laughs> I said, boy, don't bother me right now. He asked some old questions. Look, I ain't got time for that right now. When you spend time with God and you go to your workplace, even in your house, the glow on you, the radiance that come from your face, your disposition, it'll bother people. See, that's why he said, let your light so shine among Men, they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let me tell you something. You walk in... This a, somebody said true story. I ain't going to tell no lie. That's why Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Jesus, what else you going to tell? You the truth. Everybody said long time ago. When I was selling cars. See, I didn't even know this. I discovered this. Somebody said years later. Years later, I was selling cars. They made me a sales manager. Making $100,000 a year back in 1997 and 8. 1997 and 8. All of a sudden, I'm walking around, I'm selling cars, but I'm the most happy person on the car lot. I'm out there selling cars and doing my business, and I had a sales team, and all of a sudden, the people attacked me. And when they attacked me, it didn't make sense for people who had been there for years. They're like, why are they messing with Terry? And all of a sudden, they took my sales position from me and gave it to somebody else. That was one of the, one of the first major attacks that I ever had. I didn't know it was coming against my assignment and family. It floored me. It floored, it knocked, it, it knocked your pastor off his feet, to be honest with you. I mean, I wanted to sue them people. I told you, every time I tell a story, I told you I want to go back to the hood and bring all my boys back up and turn that dealership out. <laughs> Amen. I mean, that's, it, it floored me. I was a baby Christian then. But some preacher's friend of mine told me, to Terry, you got to forgive them. Because I had went to see an attorney. I wanted to sue them. And two or three other guys, one guy in, in, in particular named Wayne, he told me, to Terry, I've been here for 15 years. I never, they messed with people. It was six teams, six sale teams. And my team, month in and month out, always one of the top three. My wife can tell you. He said, I never seen some, I, n I never saw them mess with somebody like they messed with you. And when they took my team from me, a guy, a good friend of mine, Norman Miller, Norman Miller, he told me one time, I had left, I became Penn's business manager. He told me, he said, Terry, when they did that to you, I heard the guy who did it said, now let's see what this God going to do. I said, See, I didn't even know mama today was, I was being attacked. I said, what? He said, yeah. So I forgave them, went back to the car lot. A year later, God promoted me to be, uh, be penis business man, and I went on. But what I'm saying is, family, a lot of times you've been attacked. So why are they messing with me? My, why are they messing with you? They messing with you because something on your life. Right. And I didn't even know this. See, I didn't even know this. He said, man, I heard him say it. See, God will let him hear. And he told me years later, said, Terry, I heard him say, let's see what this God going to do now. And I to tell the story, at the end of the story, I remember when I left there, I had a company car, because all managers get a company car. I was driving a Camry. It was a Toyota dealership. I had to give them their car back. So it was the summer of 1999, and Penny gave me his red convertible Mercedes two-door to drive when I turned their car in. So I turned their car in and, and, and had the red Mercedes, 
And we pull off, my wife looked back. She said he had a greenless face like, man, he got away. Let me tell you something, family. When you do the right thing, you always going to get away. The Bible says he's never going to let the righteous to be put to shame. See there, I gave them that car back, but I drove off in a red convertible 1999. Amen. See, you just do the right thing. See, because when you spend time with God, it's going to bother people. And I remember time after time, I didn't even know this. I discovered this stuff years later. I remember we was, we, I was with a pastor friend of mine, his wife, my wife and I, and they were talking about certain movies. And they said, you guys saw that movie? I said, no. It's certain movies I ain't going to watch with cursing and violence and, and sex and all that. And then I was, had got away from my wife. They tried to convince her, you can watch the movie. Ain't nothing wrong. My wife said, no, I'm going to watch what he watched. <laughs> See, it's a lot of things I don't expose myself to. Because I know if my spirit get it, it's going to produce it. That's why the Bible says, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful what you expose yourself to. It's certain things I, have, I, I, I hate I ever saw or heard. See? See, it's going to bother people. You don't know because you live in a holy life. That's why God said in, in, in 1 Peter, he said, be holy because I am holy. See, so when you get around people on your job, they ain't going to say certain things. They ain't going to say, she don't laugh at it. They're going to change their conversation. Why? Because they know you different. See, that's why, where are we family? Exodus chapter, come on, let's keep reading. And Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone a glow while he talked with, with him. So when Aaron, all the children of Israel, saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone a glow they were afraid to come near him. They're going to be afraid to come near you. Amen. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron, all the rulers of the congregation, returned to him, and Moses talked with them. After the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Because watch this, family. We're going to, well, I might read, I might not. See, the glow on Moses' face, that's shown on him. It was, it was dissipated. But because you're born again, it'll never dissipate. It'll never go away. See, as, as they were looking at him, the, the glory was, was dissipating, was disappearing. See, that's why he put a veil on his face. Come on, let's keep reading. And when Moses finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Verse 34, but whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he's speaking to who? God. Who he's speaking to? He would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever has been. See, that's a principle. So when I go before God, we're going to read it in uh, 2 Corinthians 3 minutes. I don't have no veil on my face. We, you don't have no veil on your face. You're speaking to God face to face. You're speaking to God what? Face to face. The Bible says when he went in, he would take the veil off and it will be God's face and his face. That's how it is with you, family. Come on, let's keep reading. Let's finish this here. Watch this here. Verse, uh, verse 34 again. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out, and he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever, somebody say whatever, whatever he has been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, the skin of Moses' face, what? Shone a glow, radiated. Then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. He'd take that veil off. See, you don't have no veil on your face now. Come on, go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Watch this here, family. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Watch this here. 2 Corinthians chapter number what? 3. Amen. People be messing with you. You don't even know. So why are these people messing with Let me tell you something, family. That was the world. Then your pastor went to Arizona in the church and they messed with me. It ain't got nothing to do with the world church. If you in God's face and you believe him and you doing what he tells you to do, they going to mess with you. I don't care in the church, out of the church. The church is what crucified Jesus. The Bible says those that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer, shall suffer what? Persecution. So don't think you come in the church. Church folks are giving you hell up in here. <laughs> Amen. 
So a lot of times, see, you expect the world. They're the world. They don't know. But the church is the one that crucified Jesus. Peter, what's his name? Uh, Judas is the one who betrayed Jesus. Jesus. See, the church. See, the church are coming. They see something on your life. The church, everywhere I went, the church persecuted me. And then as the church started persecuting me, I woke up because I stayed in this place. I said, oh, I got something on my life. Look at your neighbor and say, it's on now. When the devil didn't take me out at that car lot back in 1997, 98, and I got my foot up on me. See, he wanted to get you early. That's why the Bible says in the book of Exodus, chapter number 2, Pharaoh killed all the babies because he wanted to kill you early. That's why in Jesus' day, Herod killed all the babies from one years old because he wanted to kill you early. He don't want you to take root. Because once you get root, baby, somebody, come on, come on, do your feet. Somebody say, I got root. See, once you got root, once the storm comes, it's going to blow over, you're going to stand right back up. The storm going to blow you, but you're going to stand right back up. That storm blew me. I, it knocked me off of my feet. I forgave them folks, went back and started selling cars again. God promoted me. So when the church started, I said, it's on now. I'm ready now. See, and see, see, one thing about it, God said he won't allow nothing to come to you that you can't handle. No temptation, no trial that overtake you such as common to man. Yeah. But God is faithful. Will not allow you to be tested, tried, or tested beyond what you're able. With the temptation, he's going to allow a way of escape. God gave me a way of escape. He's going to give you a way of escape too. See, you come in, you come up in here, and you go to some place, and you start singing too good. You say, man, why do you folks mess with me? They put the worst thing up and let them sing. <laughs> and then the whole church be saying, how come they don't let so-and-so sing? They jealous. But let me tell you something, baby. The Bible says promotion comes from the Lord. Your day is coming. You just stay faithful. Your day is coming. See, do you, they already know in that job you're more qualified than anybody. They'll go get the worst person. You just stay faithful. Amen. Your day is coming. You got to trust God. That's why you're in his face. Your day of deliverance is coming. Amen. But a lot of us, man, we get, up, we get all mad, we sue the people, we talk bad to them, we fight them. We, now, you, now you're in the flesh. Stay in the spirit. God told me years, years ago, said, Terry, if you stay in the spirit, you'll defeat them. But if you get in the flesh, I can't help you. He said, I'm a spirit God. And those that worship me, worship me in spirit and truth. And he told me from watching television. He said, when I watch television, he said, he said see, he said, when you're on television, they're in the spirit. He said, you know how you see people on television? Just like... Everybody said last week. last week. I think Pete, Pete Carroll made the worst decision in sports history to me. Now, y'all know what I'm talking about the Super Bowl. But watch this here, family. Watch this here. If I knew he was going to run that play, I'd have snatched a knot in him from television. <laughs> but I couldn't get to him because he was on television. He said, Terry, as long as you stay in the spirit, you're on television. They can't touch you. But once you get in the flesh, now they can put their hands on you. Family, stay in, stay in the television, stay in the spirit realm. See, as long as you stay in the spirit realm, they can't touch you. The Bible says Jesus walked by him. They tried to push him off the mountain. He just kept on walking. They couldn't touch him because he was in the spirit. A lot of us, we in the flesh. That's why we yeah. defeated. Yeah. Stay on television. Yeah. Stay in the movie. Lord. How many of y'all know you be hollering at them? They can't hear you. Lord. Don't do that. Watch out. Look from behind. Look. They can't hear you. When you stay in the spirit realm, they can't touch you, baby. He told me, he said, stay in the television. Amen. Stay in television. But a lot of us, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to give them the peace of my mind. They got the right one today. No, baby, you in the flesh. And in your flesh dwells no good thing. Stay in the spirit. Now watch this here, family. Where I tell you to turn? 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Look at verse 16. 2 Corinthians 3, 16. Watch this here. Somebody say, stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Amen. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 3, 16. Watch this here. It said, now let's start at verse, let's start at verse 16. 3, 16. It said, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? 
See, we don't have no veil on our face. You don't have no veil on your face. Watch this, family. Everybody look at me. How many of y'all know some people who come into the room, you know, you hate to see them coming? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Even in church. But especially on your job or some family member. You see him come, here you go. Lord, give me the strength. Give me. See, you're praying on your breath to give you strength. But how many of y'all know some folk come in the room, they like the whole room up. You be like, man, here come. They got to, see, that's how we ought to be. See, he said that they have been taken off right now. Now, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. He said, now, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, but we what? But we all would unveil face. Somebody give me a definition of all. Everybody that turns to Christ, everybody who receives Jesus Christ, their personal Lord, and say, you don't have no veil on your face now. That's why you can come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace for your ear. Babe, you can talk to God one-on-one. -on -one. You better not never sit in a boot again. Only Catholics understand what I'm talking about. They sit in the booth talking about, Father, forgive me. Get, man, I don't need you to go to God for me. Who going to go to God for you? All right now. Amen. Amen. You sit in the booth, Father, forgive me of my sin. Da, da, da. Then he go, they go. He took, no, baby, the Bible says you go talk to God. Yeah. And why does he say, I don't know what you're going to tell him about me. <laughs> but I know what I'm going to tell him about. In fact, he already know. Amen. Pray the Lord. Watch this here. Now the Lord's the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, but we what? With unveil faith, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the what? See, that's why Moses shone, it glowed, because he's in God's face. I can tell who face you've been in. And then now you want me to get all upset. Babe, I'm hearing a different voice from you. See, you want me to get upset, upset about this economy. I know my economy is in heaven. It's going up, 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 and up. You want me to get excited about all these game members and people killing themselves? I already know a thousand going to fall on my side and ten thousand are right here, but it won't come near me. You want me to get all, uh, all crazy about Ebola and, and, and uh, the flu and all this, but long life he promised me. See, I ain't up. Can you believe? Uh, wash your hands. Baby, you're in a panic. Calm down. Because I've been in his face. See, he said, if I drink anything deadly, it won't hurt me. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, I've been in his face. I can tell who face you've been in. And because you don't respond the way some people want you to respond, they want to say, oh, oh you don't care. Yeah, I, I care, but I, I got a different perspective than you got. He told me these things supposed to happen. He said these are perilous times. Amen. They're getting worse and worse. And he said, when you see them getting worse and worse, I'm on my way back. Right. Amen. Who, see, that's why he told Adam. In, in Genesis chapter number 3, he said, Adam, who you been listening to? See, I can tell who you have been listening to. Because, see, out of the bundle of the heart, the mouth going to speak. Who face you been in? Amen. Watch this here, family. But we all would unveil face, beholding as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into that same image. From what, family? Glory to what? Just as by the... Now look at me, family. Most of us have read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Did Jesus have a different response than his disciples? Absolutely. He had a different response. Why? Because Jesus was, he was talking to the Father. That's why he said, when he told me, he said, I'm getting ready to go to, to the cross. Peter snatched him and said, oh, I need to talk to you, pardon. Peter rebuked Jesus. Peter said, that'll never happen to you. What? In fact, let's read it. <laughs> Come on, go to Matthew chapter 16. Let's read it. I want you to see this here. It's according to who face you've been in. Matthew chapter number what? So when you've been in God's face in prayer, he tells you things, and you tell somebody else, they'll rebuke you. You know what you do? Turn right around and rebuke them back. <laughs> the problem is a lot of y'all will believe them. Now God then told you something, they rebuke you, and you go with them, then God will tell you, let them help you then. Matthew chapter number what? 16. Watch this here, watch this here. 
I'm in Matthew chapter 16. Watch this here, family. This, this is good. This is good. Let's start at verse 21. Matthew 16, 21. If you dare say amen. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciple that he what? Must go. He what? Must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed and raised on the... Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke. Peter rebuking Jesus. Rebuked him, saying, Lord, Lord, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Look at me, family. God done told you some things, and they tell you that'll never happen to you. And you saying, for real? No, God done told me, I'm telling y'all something right now. God done told me something, and you telling me it's not going to happen. And I'm telling you, for real? Watch this here. What, what, what does it say? Let God be in every man. But when did God tell me? In when I come out, I come out to the spirit and to the natural. But I'm still in the spirit, but I'm in the natural. So I tell you what God told me. You tell me from natural. I always said the spirit man, the natural man don't understand the things of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he understand them because they are spiritually discerned. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. So Jesus told him what the Father said, Peter rebuke him. You tell people what God told you and they rebuke you and you go, you rebuke them back. Now watch this here, family. Watch this here. Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Look at your neighbor and say, for real? Verse 23. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, what? You are an offense to me. You are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of what? Let me tell you something, baby. It's some things God told me. The only somebody needs to believe is me. I'd like for you to believe with me, but the only somebody needs to believe is me. Amen. Because, let me tell you something now. Did Peter love Jesus? You better believe he loved Jesus. But he was not thinking about the things of God. See, a lot of times you tell people, sometimes we tell people things too soon, too early, like Joseph did. I did a couple times. And they crucify us for it. But it's still going to come to pass. Now watch this here, family, from 2 Corinthians chapter, I want to read this from the Amplified Version because I love it. It said, but whenever a person turns in repentance, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Verse 16 through 18, Amplified Version. Do we have it on the screen? He said, but whenever a person turned in repentance to the Lord, the veil is stripped off and taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage and freedom. And all of us with unveiled face because we continue. Somebody say continue. Now see, that's the key, discipline. You got to continue in the word of God. What did he say in John chapter 8, verse 31? If you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, and he said, and we continue to behold, and all of us will unveil faith because we continue to behold in the word of God as a mirror of the glory of the Lord. We are constantly, that's process. Somebody say process. We are constantly being transfigured into his very own image. How many of y'all believe that? His very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. It was the spirit. When you spend time with God in his word or in prayer and your face in his face, when you come out of there, you a bad man. You know stuff that don't nobody else know. You talking different. You walking different. You acting. Now, don't get arrogant. Don't get arrogant. But you confident. You have some boldness about you. What are we going to do? do? Oh, I know you ain't been spending time with the father. How are we going to? See, my wife can tell you. I have had situations where people came against me. And I, and, and I told, I was telling, I said, God told me to say this. And I go out there and I tell people and I say and this in the meeting, and it worked like clockwork. It worked like, why? Because he didn't told me. 
and I already know what they're going to say before they say it. In a lot of cases, Terry, don't worry about what they're going to say. He said, when they say it, you're going to know exactly what to say. But if you don't spend time with him, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to go off on them. And if I go off on them, they win. See, that's, let me tell you something. Remember I told you the only reason men fail is what? Broken focus. They're trying to break your focus because you're going somewhere. That's the purpose of prayer, to keep you focused, that you don't turn coward, that you don't give up, that you don't lose heart. Prayer is key to a believer. It's key. It's just like in sports. All my guys who play sports, they know the most important thing about sports, you got to warm up. You got to stretch. You can get away with it when you're young, when you're TJ's age. But when you start turning 19, 21, 30, babies, you be stretched. They be laughing at you. You say, your day coming. You're going to be stretching too. Because you got to warm your muscles. That's what prayer is. Prayer warming you up. See, what? You're committing a day to God. You say, Father, I commit this day unto you. You cause my thoughts to become agreed with your thoughts. So should my plans be established and succeed. So he already know what the head of the day is for me. So he already, he downloaded to me, and now I'm just walking it out. I'm just walking it out. So you don't catch me by surprise. But now if I ain't spend time with him, you can throw me off. Amen. Let's keep going, family. Let's keep going. Let's turn to, uh, go to uh, Luke 21. Go to Luke 21. Luke 21, 30, uh, Luke 21, 29. This happened to anybody? Amen. Luke 21. Well, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Hey, Luke 21. Watch this here, family. Luke 21. I need somebody to read this out the message Bible for me. Luke 21. Come on, family. Who want to call it? What call it? That's my reader. Give call a mic. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. You see right here, I'm going to have you to read right there. Not right now. What did what we read it first? Luke, 29, Luke 21, 29, if you're there, say amen. Watch this here, family. He says, Luke 21, what? 29. Watch this. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are all red and what? Bud, and you should see and know, and for yourself, that some is now near. So you always, when you see things happen, so you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Or surely, or sure enough, I say to you, this generation will by no, no means pass away until all things are taking place, to take place. Heaven and earth should pass away, but my word but, but, by no, no means pass away. Okay, that's the key. My wife, slow down. Okay, verse 34. Take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, carols of this life, that the day come on you, what? unexpectedly. Look at me, family. Most of our days come on us unexpectedly. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Watch this here. Unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare. Watch this. Here. It, will come on, it will come as a snare on all those who dwell in the face of the whole earth. Watch. Therefore, and what? Pray what? Always. Watch, therefore, and pray what? That you may be counted worthy to escape what, family? Let me tell you something. If you're not praying, you're not going to escape. I thought he said, what happened? How did it happen to the Christian? What happened? How did he have a plane wreck? How did he die of this disease or this? He said, you better watch and pray. If not, you're not going to be able to escape. See, I don't want you, I want you, to, I don't want you to read the whole thing, color. Drop all the way down to right there. Mm-hmm. Right here. No, start right there. Mm -hmm. Right there. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. Pray constantly that you will... Oh, oh, you read too fast. Pray what? Constantly. He said pray what? Constantly. Come on. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and wits to make it through everything. Oh, oh, oh. ain't that good? Mm -hmm. If you ain't praying, you ain't going to make it through. You're going to make it through, but you're going to struggle. Start over, Carl. Pray constantly. Pray what? Constantly. Come on, Carl. That you will have the strength and wits to make it through everything. Okay, what that word with me? You have the wisdom. You have the insight. He said, pray 
that you may have the strength and the wit, the wisdom. Come on, Carla. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and wits to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. We're done. We're done. He said, you pray so you can have the strength, the wisdom, the strength, so you can end up on your feet. See, that's what we're talking about. A lot of us, we're not on our feet. We're talking about, come now, Lord, please, because we're struggling. Because we're not praying, family. When you pray, God going to tell you stuff. He said, call unto me. That's this in Jeremiah 33. 3. He said, call unto me. I'm going to show you great and mighty things you know not of. See, he said, when you pray, it's going to give you strength. You going, he said, having done all to stand, stand. You going to end up on your, you going to be able to say what Joseph said in Genesis 15, 20. You meant it for my evil, but God meant it for my good. See, family, that's why a lot of us, we're not on our feet. We don't have no prayer life. See, when you got a prayer life, you're going to have, my time is up. Let me see, I might want to, can I do one more scripture or something? <laughs> but give me something. Can I do, can we, maybe two more scriptures. Uh, Lord, I ain't know what, the, what time LeBron come on day? Don't worry about that. <laughs> family, family, if we don't pray, we ain't going to have the strength. We ain't going to have the wisdom. We're not going to end up on our feet. Come on, we in Luke. Luke we in Luke, go to Luke 22. We're right there. Come on, Luke 22, verse 31. Luke, we're right there. Same scripture. We're right there. Luke 22, 31. Thank you, Carla. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Terry, Terry, Linda, Linda, John, John, Mary, Mary. Indeed, Satan has what? Ask for you. And if one translates, he asks for all of you. That's true. He has asked for all of you that he may do what? Shift you as weak. But I have what? I have what? That your faith should not what? And when you return to me, that it will so strengthen. That's Luke, Luke 22, 31 and 32. See, he said, I pray for you. Why? That your faith fail not. We're going to pick it up next week, family. Lord, that time went by quick. Family, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, prayer is the key. It is the what? Key. And see, let me tell you something. One of the things your pastor do, one of the things I do, I pray. Also, I have confession. I have did my confession, and I pray is not the same. I got to, get, see, next week, and we're going to get into it. He said, Terry, you need to, watch this. He said, from from quietness and confidence come from your strength. That's in Isaiah 30, verse 21, 30, 30 15. Isaiah 30, 15, he said, in quietness and confidence, when I get quiet and I put my face in his face and I listen to him and he downloads things to me and tell me things, I'm ready. He talk, it's spirit talking to spirit. It's deep talking to deep. And when I come out of there, now I'm, see, my wife showed me a, 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 I don't know what you call it, a, a, a word the other week, the word silent and listen. They have the same letter. See, some of us talk too much. The word silent and listen, they have the same letters. Some of us need to be quiet, need to be silent. See, and, and quietness and confidence is your strength. That's why I said in, Isaiah, in Psalm 54 to 16, be still and know. Be still and so when I come out, watch this, Brother John. Be still and I'm telling you what he said. I ain't asking your opinion. Because I already know. So when you come back with me and tell me that'll never happen to you, I'm going to rebuke you. Because I already been still. Now I, I know. I already know the factory going to close down. That's why I got another job. You leaving this good job, then a uh, uh, year and a half later, girl, how you know that? <laughs> if you smart, last thing, close your Bible. If you smart, you will watch somebody who has a prayer life and listening to God. That's what, they, that's what uh, 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 who did that? A uh, lot did. You just watch them. My wife can tell you, I got people who in my circle, they say, we're just going to watch Pastor Terry. We're going to do what he did. What did Paul said, Cop, follow me as I follow Christ. 
They said, if he don't go up, we're not going up. See, that's the key, your prayer life. God going to tell you things. And when he tell you something, it's the supernatural telling you. And he going to tell you supernatural things. It ain't going to make sense. It's going to make faith. Pastor, that don't make sense. I know it. It make faith. It don't make reason. It make faith. I know what reason is. See, it don't make intellect. It don't make reason. It make faith. Streaming live. Much love. Wave at them, family. Much love. See you next week. Hello, family. I'm Pastor Terry Starks of Fresh Start New Beginning Christian Church. I want to thank you for tuning in today. We hope that you heard something that truly make a difference. I know it's going to make a difference. For the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, the man of God, I need for you to do something for me. I need for you to sow a seed into the ministry. If you have a local church, your tithe belongs to your local church. But if you don't have a local church, you can tie directly into Fresh Start New Beginning Christian Church. Now, everyone can sow an offer. I'd like for you to go to our website, which is fsnbcc.org, and click on the donate button. Or if there's an address below on the screen, you can send it directly to the ministry. And remember, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, whoever's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become a fresh start, a new beginning. See you next time.